Um, well, I started when I was in primary school, um, and we went out on the velodrome with. Um, we had a small primary school of 30 children. It was just getting on the boards, and it, I really enjoyed it. So then I started from there. Um, well, I raced triathlons when I was about 14, 15. So yeah, I remember I did the first triathlon I've ever done. Um, on just like a clunker of a kind of mountain bike and it was about a 15k ride or something and I, I don't know what speed I sat on but it wasn't, wasn't very fast but from that moment on I was kind of, I thought that kind of started off my riding and um, yeah doing triathlons and then I, I went across into skiing and just used cycling as a bit of cross training and then yeah eventually stepped back into, into the cycling world so yeah early days on a clunker basically. <laughs> Probably when I was about four I was riding around my cul-de-sac and I actually I crashed the first time because <laughs> I was riding around and I ran over an apple. But yeah, that's probably my first experience. Um, I started off doing triathlon because my my brother actually got a bike and then upgraded, so we had a bike at home. So I thought I'd get on it and start doing triathlons. And then yeah, I just love the cycling part of it. So yeah, I got more and more into the cycling. I grew up in Munich. Um, I left. Munich because I wanted to have an English bachelor degree um, so I went to New Zealand and studied there and I got to know my husband more my future husband back then and um, I moved to Australia because of him and we got married and um, yeah I started racing bikes because of him he brought me into it yeah, well actually I was um, at uni down in Melbourne, like I'm originally from Myrtleford up in North East Victoria, so awesome place to ride a bike, um, but I really didn't get into riding until I was studying down in Melbourne, so um, I probably got to credit um, Peter Mullins a fair bit for helping me get back in, because she was, um, we did tries together when we were about 15, and um, yeah, just for cross training for skiing, I was rang her up and said, oh you know, what, what cycling club are you with, and how do I get back into it, and yeah, she hooked me up with a bit of riding stuff there. My favourite things about racing would probably be um, riding with a great team of girls that we have, um, like pushing ourselves to the limits and yeah, trying our best and executing our like team tactics. Definitely road racing. I like road racing, although sometimes I see to the track like I didn't go to track nationals in 2012, I think it was. And um, yeah, watching it on TV, it was sort of like, oh, I wish I was down there. Like there's just that thrill of going fast on the track? Um, just competing. Um, yeah, I love the competition, I love fighting and um, I love to work myself to the top and try to just improve. Yeah, so I was the recipient of the um, 2013 Amy Gillett Scholarship. Um, that assisted me by allowing me to go overseas with the girls last year. Um, so it was great to be able to race with them and see what racing is like at that level because I'd never sort of experienced riding in the longer tours and um, such like with the team. I'm very proud to be Australian now and having this opportunity to race for Australia. And um, yeah, the Australians have been all very good to me, um, taking me in. Just recently I'm um, winning the Madison title with Nettie Edmondson. That was a good result, what we were yeah, really happy with and to be a part of the first um, national women's Madison was pretty special. Actually at Canberra tour, I was only under 15s I think, or under 17s. And I actually broke away solo and won the Canberra tour. So I think that's the only time I've ever been away solo and won a race. So I think that's sort of stuck in my mind a bit, but also winning the world, cha um, the world team's time trial in Russia with um, Georgia Baker and Taylor Jennings. I'm definitely my coach, Donna Ray Selinski. She's been someone who's always believed in me, and even sometimes when I haven't believed in myself, she's always kind of been there to really keep on, you know, pushing me, motivating me, and um, like ticking off little goals along the way. So, and then as well, like it just there can be so many hard times in cycling but you just get one result and it just takes you to that next level and takes you so much further so that kind of happened for me um, this last season away in, in Europe when I got a couple of really good placings at um, La Route de France and then um, in uh, one of the other tours in France um, in Ardèche. When I was younger I would say like Anna Mears, well, um, we first got to meet her when I was also in primary school so it was kind of 
um, cool being able to see how she's progressed through the sport and she's always, yeah, riding around and saying hello and that sort of thing. Definitely Marina of Oz. <laughs> she's a big idol. Like when we were riding the peloton last year and she's sort of next to you, just like, oh my gosh. But <laughs> yeah, you get used to it. Um, I think last year was a big learning experience, like, because I'm so young and racing the elite girls, it's hard because we don't have an under 23 category, but, um, yeah, I think just learning off the other girls and just getting a bit more experience like, this year as well. I just want to develop as a rider. I want to try to see where I fit in overseas, um, and um, I don't have um, any particular goals apart from of course I would like to try to get to games or the worlds but I haven't picked any smaller races or any smaller bits just yet I'm just letting it all sink in and, and try to yeah go with it yeah I mean I'd love to podium in a, in a UCI I was close last year I got a couple of fourths and a sixth and a seventh so yeah I'm knocking on the door so I'd love to get a, a podium finish in, in one of the big UCI races I'm um, really looking forward to Qatar um, I'm definitely a flat land rider so that's going to suit me hopefully down to the ground so we'll see how I go there that's early season so it'll be interesting to see how the form is very important I think that's one race where everyone is actually here to compete and because everyone from Europe is here to compete in it as well it gives everyone the equal chance to learn and equal chance to compete against each other. I think it's very important. Yeah for sure I think even the um, NRS series has definitely developed a lot and um, getting more riders coming out doing the NRS events which is good and the um, like the racing and that has also improved from yeah, past years. I think it's really step in the right direction and it's going really well. I think it's um, very important. Like the girls are just getting stronger and stronger with the National Road Series. Like last year, you can see within one year that how much the girls have improved and just like race tactics and now having teams and having the team tactics there is also a good like learning experience for when you travel overseas because it's all team racing overseas. Oh it's been a huge change in the last couple of years like the standard is just incredible like to race over in Europe and come back here and, and it's, it's, it's really hard I mean the size of the bunches may not be the, the same um, but certainly the aggression of the racing and stuff like that and, and the fact that it's got the teams aspect now and people launching people up the road and really trying to work one another over it's it's made a huge huge difference to um to the standard of racing and it's it's great because it's giving girls a really good stepping stone to get to Europe and it's showing talent now like people are like you look at Flick Wardlaw who just won nationals um, for the TT like she's a product of national road series and there's no reason why someone like her can't step across into a European team now and probably perform really really well. Not really, I like I like wearing new kit when it's race day, that's a good thing, sort of save up a little kit so they don't wear it too much, that's a good thing, <laughs> yes. Um, I never race in fresh kit, I have to wear the kit in training before I wear it in the race, I don't know, I did it once and I broke my collarbone, so I just like set that I, I'm pretty sure I have to wear, wear the kit in, um, yeah, so that's one of my superstitions, never wear fresh kit racing. <laughs> sort of changes to be quite honest, I change my playlist regularly, <laughs> yeah but something to pump you up ready for the race. Before I go to race I watch a little motivational clip from YouTube, <laughs> but um, once I'm actually there I do not listen to music, it irritates me more so than, than it does help. Um, I really enjoy just as a warm, like if I'm warming up for something, um, a bit of block party, yep good beats, um, so that's yeah definitely up there and then I also like I don't know, a fair, fair bit of kind of alternative kind of music as well. So most Triple J play mix type of yeah playlist stuff is, is what's on my iPod. Uh, probably bananas because they're easy to digest and they're pretty, pretty tasty. <laughs> Everyone says pasta but I don't really like it. But um, probably rice. Love my carbs. <laughs> I try to eat carbs, mostly pasta before I have a race. Um, oh, I'm a bit impartial. I'm not. I'm a bit of an iron gut, so I can kind of eat whatever I want to eat and feel okay. Like I don't feel. I don't do um, tomatoy based things before racing, though. Like 
um, like overseas we often have like pasta with like bolognese sauce stuff that doesn't agree well with me like right before rain so I kind of steer, steer clear of that but yeah I'm just whatever's on yeah stir fries or um, yeah other kind of pasta sauces and stuff like that yeah it's pretty pretty cruisy